Earlier we went through the functions that are given to us by pair RDD functions. These are methods that we can call on RDDs that have two tuples as their data type and they are treated as a key value pair. In particular we went through the aggregate by key. There are a number of others in particular it would be kind of nice to show the joins. Unfortunately the data that we're playing with here is all in one file. Uh, joining really does require having uh, multiple files. Generally, you need to have multiple data sets that have certain keys with them. But we got these average temperatures by key, and then we printed them out, and uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, we have a whole bunch of numbers. The years aren't sorted. We could do that by collecting and sorting on them, but this is really the type of data that would be much nicer to plot out. And so instead of printing it, I'm actually going to get rid of the print, and I'm going to go ahead and create another plot. We'll go ahead and make our histogram a small window as well, so it'll fit nicely in here. So I would like to plot the data from average temps by year. Now that's only a 100 like doubles, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to collect it. Uh, average by year data equals average temps by year dot collect so that we actually have an array from these ints to where the int is the year and then a double and an int the sum and the count and I want to make a scatter plot of these so let's do um, long term plot because this is a plot over time is equal to plot dot scatter plot. I'm going to use scatter plot with lines, which is just a helper function that allows it, makes it easier for us to do the lines. First, the x data. The x data is just that average by year data mapped to the first element. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit a carriage return here which of course Eclipse didn't want to take the first time. There we go. Y. Well the Y value should also be determined by the average by year data. And we're going to map that, but now I need to take the sum and divide it by the count. <clears throat> this is going to look a little bit ugly unless I use a case here. So I could do this case, it turns out I don't care about the year for this one, but I do care about the sum and the count, and what I want to give us back is S divided by C. Okay, title. Uh, not going to care about the title, I'm not going to care about the label. One of the nice things about Scala is you can do named parameters. Symbol size, I'm going to set this to zero because I don't care. Uh, we'll go ahead and set this to a blue. Okay, this I did a little update so I can do these things. This one is a red. This one is a red. And this one's a blue. Okay. we can set oh boom boom okay I took away the name which is somewhat unfortunate because when you are doing named uh, arguments it's very helpful to have the the names for stuff I believe this was just color so I should be able to say color equals that and then the last thing here is a line grouping. Now, apparently color is not the correct uh, version of this. Let's go ahead and since I don't feel like pulling up the documentation on this, I'm going to do that. It is called symbol color.
Okay, it also happens to be the color that's used for the line. What the line grouping does is it tells this what groups of points to make lines between. In this case, I want lines between all of them. So by setting it to one, I get that effect. Uh, we could also make it do lines between other subsets of, um, of points, but I'm not going to go into that at this point for this video. Maybe we'll have a reason to do that later. That would be something like if we had multiple data sets and I wanted to connect them with lines, but they were all in a single RDD, this would give us the ability to, to do that type of functionality. So we'll run this. Pardon me, it feels like I really should comment out some of the earlier processing so we can get to this faster, but it's not a problem. <laughs> okay. So currently, this looks a little bit interesting. Um, so this is just doing lines for the data as they came in, which was not in sorted order by year. Okay, so if I want this to look nicer, we need to collect that and then do a sort, sort by of underscore dot underscore one, so everything is sorted by year. We'll run it again. Hopefully, instead of getting weird squigglies, we will get pretty much a, uh, a nice, reasonably flat, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, line showing us the average temperatures over time as measured in Detroit Lakes. And of course, things to keep in mind, you know, this is one city at one location in the northern United States. Um, so if you're thinking this is somehow indicative of larger scale terms, it is one data point in there. So this is what it looks like. The first data point is anomalous because the 1895, we only had 30 some odd days and that means they were all in winter. So we would expect this one to be fairly cold. The last point too might be anomalous. I, we'd have to look at the data to see if we actually have a full year worth of data. But everything else in here, these are the average temperatures that, uh, that came out for this in Fahrenheit. And you can see that Detroit Lakes for the year, the high temperatures tend to be in the lower 50s. So there we go. We have uh, used our pair RDDs to group together some data and then to display it using a line plot that allows us to kind of visualize what's going on much better than just printing out a bunch of numbers.